Hi, Prosperity Team. This is Dr. Money coming to you from the Prosperity Corner of the Universe where silliness is sacred and nobody's perfect. I am your P.O.P., your Professor of Prosperity, and I'm here so that all of our lives can pop with prosperity. I am so glad to have with me today a great friend. Now, because of technology, we are good friends, but we've never met in person, but That's we've right. been friends for like, what, 15 years? I don't know, maybe 20. Uh, uh, when I think about it, um, yeah, longer, long time. And she is an amazing and powerful woman who has been through so many things in her life. And I thought that you would want to hear her story, her story of grit, her story of pulling herself up with her bootstraps and um, maybe a little up, a little down and a little up. So her name is Robin Blank Mascari and she lives in Bozeman, is that it? Bozeman, Montana. Uh, she's yeah. married and uh, she has a wonderful business now and is extremely successful. And Robin, could you tell us a little bit about what you've been through in the past few years in terms of the downs and <laughs> maybe moving up a little bit? Oh, I, I'd be happy to. Thank you, Anne. I love being with you. It's been a joy all of these years. And you're right. We've never met, but we know each other so well. What a gift you are. Well, um, boy, I don't know how far back you want me to go, but... Um, uh, maybe we can start with Gregory's... Uh, okay. Well, no, before that, it was the money and then it was yeah. Gregory's illness. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we'll start before that. You know, we've um, just for a little context, um, I got married for my first time at age 51 and uh, married into um, and instantly got six children. So I got blessed with this amazing <laughs> family. And we were living in Washington and moved out to Montana where the, most of the kids are and the grandkids. So um, blessed with an amazing family. And um, we're entrepreneurs. And as entrepreneurs, we're both of us are high risk takers. And uh, we've been up, down and around. And we were in a situation when we met uh, with a company and uh, things um took a, an unexpected turn. It was a place we thought we would be at forever. And uh, it, it, it turned out differently. And so we had to make some changes in our life and um, went for some other new businesses and tried many different things and nothing quite clicked in. We were doing extraordinarily well with that company. And let, let, let me interrupt. I remember during that time, you just said, I just want to find my home. Remember that? Exactly. I find my home. We, we, we thought business, we were, business home. Yes. A business home. Thank you for bringing that up. Anne, because it's really true. Um, my husband and I are professionals in network marketing and he says often it's easy to find a place to stay. It's hard to find a home. And after we had left the place that we thought we were going to be lifers at, um, we were in many, many different companies and we worked really, really hard, but one thing or another just didn't work out. And um, we, uh, and we got caught in the market thing. We had, um, we ended up in this lawsuit with this company we were with and, and Gregory says it differently. I just kind of tell the truth about it. it was very unexpected and went from very significant income to um, six figure legal bills took out seconds on both of our homes, then the market crashed. And, you know, it was, it was kind of a tumble and we just kept working really hard thinking we could dig out of it, but it didn't turn out that way. And um, so our financial world came crashing down uh, and it became really, really difficult um, with very high expenses and, you know, income that was not what we were used to. And we dug a deep hole and, you know, throughout that, I, I have tremendous faith. I've always had great faith in, in ourselves and in our abilities and in what was possible. But we got to learn what it was like to live very, you know, abundantly, financially and generously and then not. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, it took a major nosedive and we'll, we'll skip a lot of the details, but we've been looking for our home, looking for our home. And um, then several years ago, we actually found it. 
And we, um, we're in a very deep hole financially, uh, but always having the faith that it was going to come, you know, we're going to figure it out. You know, both of us, as I mentioned, are entrepreneurs and we're willing to take risks and uh, sometimes it pays off, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, and we've had both experiences. And so we, we finally did find our home and our business several years ago and worked really hard and developed a wonderful business. And then... Uh, December 31st at 11 o'clock a.m., we got the phone call nobody wants to get. And the doctor says, um, I hate to tell you this, but um, this is for my husband. Uh, he had not been feeling well, and we didn't know what it was. And we had all kinds, he was in extreme pain, and things just were not right. And discovered that y'all had done everything you could think of to relieve that pain. Uh, we I, did. I remember and that. You went through everything. <laughs> And we've been marketing cutting edge, you know, health products for decades, you know, together 50 years. And, you know, we had the resources that way, but um, we just couldn't figure it out. And finally, he got the big C, uh, stage four lung cancer diagnosis, December 31st of 2019. And, you know, the moment we got that, we, we, it changed everything. And we really, um, we made a decision that, um, he was going to be fine. And we knew it. And uh, we, we, we called it Gregory 2.0 is unfolding. <laughs> and we actually, um, the very first phone call we made was to our coach. And she said that all healing happens with forgiveness. And so wow. it was very, very powerful. We had little forgiveness prayers all over the house, everywhere. Uh, Gregory's health got really, really challenging. Um, he lost a ton of weight and he was in pain. He was on 24 seven morphine with oxycodone and supplemental. He, was, he was emaciated, right? He was down to 110 pounds. Yeah. Was, how tall is he? Um, five, nine. Yeah. So it was very scary. I never lost hope. And every day I, I was his cheerleader. I sang to him, you know, um, <clears throat> I'd, I'd, I'd say, you know, every little cell in your body is happy. Every little cell in your body is well, you know, I, I'd sing that and I'd sing the Beatles getting better all the time. And, you know, I was, it, it was. A, I tell you, you had your, your clocks, your phone set every, had, every hour. It would go off for five minutes. Every hour, my phone would go off with the Beatles song, getting better all the time. And, and so, you know, um, I became a caregiver and had this business and had, you know, we have a large home and five animals and then COVID happened. And so um, we couldn't go out. And um, what happened was so powerful is there was so much grace that happened in our life. Um, every time I turned around, there was more grace and uh, we, we, you know, approach things from every direction possible. We knew it, it didn't have a chance to survive, you know, that cancer and he was going to be great, but we didn't know how long it was going to take. Um, we have access to lots of wonderful nutritional support, great practitioners. Uh, we, we kind of did everything, um, used technologies, um, and went to the. He was, let me. Add, he was actively taking steps to do everything he could. He didn't say, "Okay, well, that doesn't work." He was just doing many things at once. Correct. Oh, we and it got a little overwhelming. I think anyone who goes through that journey, it's uh, the most difficult part of the journey is choosing your path because people want to be helpful and we have access to so many different kinds of health resources. It's daunting. It's overwhelming. And, and people that love you very much have their ideas of what's best that may not be a fit. And sadly, the kid's mother had passed away of stage four cancer, and they saw that we were going a similar route, and it was very scary to them. So it was a journey. And uh, the turnaround happened when we went to the Cancer Treatment Center of America, and they did a procedure to close off uh, the area where the, the fluid was accumulating, and he started on immunotherapy. And, and of course, did. this was right during the middle of COVID. I mean, right. the, the first when nobody, you know, flying, you said there was nobody in the airport. I can't remember well, that. Well, we're, we're in the security area and it was us and the, uh, and the security people. That was it. And <laughs> that was it, yeah. 
the TSA people and the plane had like 30 people on it and and it was eerie and strange. And then we went to this wonderful place uh, called Cancer Treatment Center of America where it was, they just fill you with hope and compassion and caring and, um, and things turned around. Um, uh, at that time, but that's, we did a lot of things. We did conventional and unconventional. We did all kinds of things, but you know, the, the deep prayer work and forgiveness, I think was really significant. Um, and in four months he got the diagnosis that, um, no evidence of disease. So we call him Ned. And no months, evidence of disease, Ned. Okay. And, and at that time, you know, I was a full-time caregiver, but also had to manage the house and had no support at the house. We had, we have an assistant. She couldn't come, you know, we didn't have the, you know, we couldn't have visitors and, and help around in the early days. We had a little help from the kids, but, you know, we had people shopping for us and I was making juice every day. It was intense, but the beauty is um, the business we had sustained us and kept growing, even though we well, went, it started booming in the kind of in the middle of all this. It was crazy that we went from two of us working full time to one very part time, and business was thriving. And so, um, you know, tremendous gratitude, tremendous gratitude for there is so much grace that happened. Everything from you know we were doing raw juicing, and our son has a commercial aquaponics business and grows microgreens. And so, you know, we had deliveries of the best of the best to, you know, give him the best nurturing support um, nutritionally because he wasn't wanting to eat much. So I made fresh juice every day, several times a day sometimes, and, you know, just did the best I could. And well, let, me, let me add, we, on this um, abundance, for abundance Affirmations, we highlight affirmations. Do you have any favorite affirmations you could share that you use during this process. You know, I know that you shared two songs. Yes, this the songs and you know, every day I really think that um I, I lived in a lot of gratitude and I looked for grace and I found it every day. And I wish I would have journaled, but I was so immersed in everything I didn't. But I I watched, you know, my focus and what I was thinking about and and just being in such gratitude and blessing everything we did have, the kind of support we had. So it was, um, you know, I just knew that he'd be, you know, we just focused on Gregory 2.0 emerging and he did deep work emotionally, physically, spiritually. Um, and fortunately, you know, we were recovering from our deep hole and the financial was just supporting us beautifully. So just being in gratitude and we didn't share with everybody what was going on. We were selective about that because we did a lot of prayer work. We reached out. I mean, I reached out to, you know, different kinds of prayer networks and did, you know, prayers with lots of um, special friends uh, that really, really held us over. And, you know, our financial world had turned around, thank goodness, because it allowed us to have the resources to do all the alternative things that were totally out of pocket to the tune of thousands and thousands of dollars. And so, you know, insurance- well, let's move into the, 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 the business um, thing. And so the business really started thriving. I can remember you talking about uh, you could not believe your income, how amazing it was. You don't have to give us any numbers, but could you just kind of <laughs> well, say something I, about that? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, in our line of business, you know, if you build a team and you have good people and you have the right situation, things can, and the right timing, and we got it all. Uh, the right company, the right timing, the right product that, you know, and every day uh, the products that we market um I get to wake up and hear miracle stories every single day. And so it's very exciting to, to have that kind of wonderful energy. And, and so it was really um, such a gift that the business kept growing and blossoming, even when we weren't able to spend our full time in it any longer. And I, my major focus was caregiving. So, uh, and then all these people and resources just kept coming to us, whether they be some unique technologies or some, you know, I don't know if people have ever heard that 
mega doses of melatonin is a great thing for cancer. I mean, he was taking 180 milligrams twice a day. And, and there's this wonderful um, dog dewormer called Panicure that is uh, proven to be yeah. tremendously effective for healing of, of cancer. So we just did everything and we knew it didn't have a chance. And, and the business kept growing and growing and growing. And I've never experienced this level of income in my life. My husband had, but I hadn't. Um, and it was fun to acknowledge the milestones when they happened, you know, our, our, our best day ever, our best week ever, our best month ever. And so we just kept affirming, acknowledging, appreciating, being in gratitude. And, uh, and then, you know, four months later, you know, um, he was totally fine. And it was the, the oncologist who we had telemedicine meetings with, you know, he was a partner with us. He was wonderful. And then, you know, Gregory's all better. And then I had uh, another knee replacement. So he took, I took care of him. Then he took care of me. And um, this was all last year and right in the middle of COVID. Uh, and so I, I uh, went through uh, my second knee replacement. The first one was extremely challenging. I didn't want to do another one, but I had to uh, for a variety of reasons and um, had a very speedy recovery. Uh, and in three weeks, I was rid of my walker and my off my meds. And um, so we're both now doing great <laughs> and we're very healthy and happy and um, just every day we're in gratitude and we start our days with prayers. We end our days with prayers and um, express gratitude all day long and do that forgiveness work all day long. That is wonderful, Robin. So this is a great story of prosperity. What I heard you do, the steps you sort of took is the first thing you really made a decision. You said, this is not going to be like this. He will be well. And I'm sure that you Not did only the same. Will he do well, but he's going to be better than ever. <laughs> better than ever. And also probably with your money, you made some kind of decision too at that point, like we're going to change this or we're going to be abundant again or some kind of decision. Is that correct? Well, we had made that decision a long time ago that we knew we were going to figure this out. We didn't know. I mean, the company that we started with, I started as a customer. I had no intention of building a business that had such amazing results that I couldn't not share. And now two years later, it was exactly two years of really building this business. Um, 35,000 people's lives have changed. Yeah, you have 35,000 people in your downline? Right, which is super. I mean, Robin and, and Gregory, her husband, are really big in this business. They um, are showcased in shows all over the country and probably around the world. So this is amazing. So you made a decision. You the, then you call for support because you wanted to see what is missing. And they said, well, forgiveness is something that you really need to focus on. So you focused on that. And then in addition to that, for all the little things, everything that happened, the small gains that you make, you were in complete gratitude. And as you continue to hold your place, to take your stance, you know, to, to stay there, things began to change. Some things changed gradually and some things changed very quickly, but you stayed the course regardless of how long it took. And now you've emerged and I know you will. I know you still, you know, you're just like everybody else. You still have the daily problems that we have and you maybe want to organize your office or something better, but in, but you have been through a tremendous uh, transformative experience in your life. And I want to ask you if you had to do this again, would you either not change anything or is there anything you would change? It's, it's a really good question, Anne. And I, I do want to say both Gregory and I, you know, when it was all over, we kind of looked at each other and said, you know, it's almost like it didn't happen, like it was a bad dream. And um, when we were in it, we were so in it. And, um, you know, I, I look back and I don't even... I can't even imagine how I held all that I held at the time because I was managing, you know, the, the home, the dogs, uh, his caregiving, 
you know, the resources, you know, having to have five different people shop for us and be organized with that. I don't know how I did it. So as far as what would I do differently? I, I'm amazed I got through it. <laughs> and, and, uh, well, and we, it worked then, right? <laughs> well, we had gone to a, a trade show in November of 2019 and we purchased a massage chair. And little did we know that that would be my salvation because every night when you know, it was late at night and I had to, you know, I had so many people and you, you talked about support and the support piece was massively important. Um, not just all the different healthcare practitioners that were guiding us through the journey, but um, the friends and family. And um, we, we put our, our, our spiritual coach on a retainer <laughs> and, and did, you know, major prayer work with her on a regular basis. And that made a huge difference to us. And, you know, just the littlest things I would look for every day to be in gratitude for. And I'd always look for the grace and the grace kept showing up, you know, just little things of how well they worked. Like when we showed up in, in Arizona to go to the cancer treatment center, a friend of ours, you know, met us at the airport. Gregor was in a wheelchair. I had all the luggage and him in the wheelchair. And she showed up with her car and her husband and they drove off in their car. She gave me her car. I didn't have to go through the, you know, oh. the car rental thing. They just made it easy for us. Um, the place we stayed was, per, you know, every, there was just grace everywhere. Things that could have been extremely difficult were made easier by support in so many dimensions. So that made a huge difference. And, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of prayers and I just, you know, extended the prayer requests to people all over the planet and uh, prayer, you know, made a huge difference for both of us. Yes. And I, I left that out on one of your steps. You asked for help. And you received it. Some people ask and then they don't ever receive it. But you ask and you received it because it was like you couldn't do it without the help of people. I know that you didn't have the, you know, the staff that you normally have with your business, you know, right there with you. But there were many ways that you asked for help and people gave you that help. So you have um, given everyone a lot to think about. And I think inspired each one of us to know that uh, it is possible to go through very difficult situations and emerge on top of those. I wanna thank you so much. And um, I always end my programs with the same uh, thing and that is, and I'm gonna see if you will repeat this because I always end it with I love you. So I'm gonna say um, my I love you and then I'm gonna give you an opportunity to say it too because I always like to let everybody know that we're all in this together. So this is Dr. Money. I want you to thank you for listening to this and remind you of one more thing for sure. And that is that I love you. And Robin, what do you say? I love you. Thank you. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>